Welcome back to the weekly Big Sky Now media panel. We have Ian Bavona of the Columbia Basin Herald, Fritz Neighbors here with me at the Daily Interlake, and Mark Nelke of the Coeur d'Alene Press. We've got the whole squad with us, going to break down some Big Sky playoff action, do a little recap of that Sac State game. Before we dive into that, I did want to mention it looks like UC Davis head coach Dan Hawkins will be stepping away from the program. He'll still be on an advisor role, I saw, but going to be moving along. Maybe next week we'll talk about the coaching vacancies in the conference with now NAU and Davis going to be on the hunt. So had to give the rare breaking news on the show out there, but I just saw that on Twitter, so I had to throw it out there. And next week we can dive into that one a bit. But on to the playoff action. Let's get into it. I forgot to mention, I'm, or I did say I'm Josh Dugan. I don't know. It's one of those days. I'm all pumped up. But – Reaction to the Sac State game, I wanted to start out there. The Hornets pulled off a 42-35 road win over the North Dakota Fighting Hawks. Why don't we just start with uh, everyone's reaction? Ian, we'll go to you first and just go around and then get into some predictions for Sac State's next playoff game. Yeah, uh, Sac State must have heard the way we were kind of down on them last week and used that as motivation for uh, that playoff game. Uh, Just a really fun back-and-forth game. Obviously, Sac State goes up 28-14 at half. Uh, that third quarter really allowed uh, North Dakota to get back in it. Only, I think it was minus five total yards they had in that third quarter. Uh, but how about Caden Bennett, man? 17 to 22, 207 yards, 207 yards passing, 126 on the ground and two scores. What a game from him. Ended up getting it out in the fourth quarter. But uh, they really surprised me. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but just kind of the way we were talking about him last week. Right. No, impressive stuff for sure from the Hornets. How about you, Fritz? I think I was the guy that picked him. Oh, yeah. know, after I poor mouth him, I <laughs> thought UC Davis should have been in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I got to pick Sac State anyway because of Andy Thompson. And, and you know, when we talked about quarterbacks a couple of weeks ago, I skipped right over Caden Bennett, and uh, he looked like one of the better players on the field, period, mm-hmm. last week. So uh, good on Sac State. Andy Thompson's all, already equaled uh, the previous coach's playoff wins. That's impressive. As good as Sac State was in the big sky, they kept losing playoff games. I think they went one and three. Under Taylor, uh, now they're one and zero against Andy Thompson, and uh, you know, let's see how they do in South Dakota down in Vermilion. Right, we'll get to that one in a second. That's going to be a tough test for sure. How about you, Mark? Uh, reaction to that one? Yeah, good for them. I mean, I, I I had them going out quickly too, but hey, they ran the ball really well, and Caden Bennett looked like a combination of Malott and Chambers back there, throwing and running and stuff like that. You know, and they were able to. to run the ball well enough and then throw it enough to kind of throw some semblance of balance. And so if they could keep that up this week, they, they have a shot again. Yeah, no, it was an impressive win on the road in the Dome. I thought they did look a, a couple steps quicker than their opponent. They have a lot of speed on that team. I remember after they lost, I believe it was to Montana State. We were talking on here, and I have said something like, they have a lot of raw talent, but they make a lot of mistakes. Credit to their first-year head coach, Andy Thompson. That's what I was getting at. He has that team playing on point in the playoffs. They really cleaned it up when it mattered most. So impressive win. We'll get to some predictions for this week. The Hornets will stay in the Dakotas, head south. They take on South Dakota. The Coyotes in Vermillion. The Coyotes finish the year the number three team in the FCS. That'll be a tough test for the Hornets. Why don't we start with you, Ian? Just what does Sac State have to do to win it overall? What's your prediction for that one? Uh, yeah, it's going to sound very cliche, but it's really just going to come down to establishing the run. Um, obviously, they did that really well against North Dakota last week. Um, and against uh, South Dakota's number five scoring defense in the FCS, that's going to be a huge aspect. Um, I think it's going to be end up being a low-scoring game. I was looking at some of South Dakota's other games. They're not really a, a team that's going to put up, you know, 50 points a game or anything like that. So it's going to be one of those kind of grueling, dueling it out kind of football games. I could see it... Uh, I could see an ending in Sac State's favor if they're able to get that run game going, but I think I'm going to go with South Dakota this week in a close game, maybe 21-14, 17-14, somewhere around then. Yeah, I hear you. I'm expecting a gritty ball game, and the run game's definitely going to be crucial. How about you, Mark? Yeah, South Dakota ran for 221 yards. I think it was last week, so they can do that. I mean, Sac State's got to do basically the same thing it did this last week. You know, get the run going, throw it enough to, you know, throw it on their terms rather than being forced to throw and stuff like that. And if they can do that, they'll still be in the game. But um, they're going to have to stop uh, South Dakota's running game too. So, Yeah, strength for strength. How about you, Fritz? Oh, I, I think uh, Caden Bennett and the Hornets have hit their stride, and I, I expect them to win again. Maybe I'm being a little bit big, skate homer, but uh, I think they can score 28 points, and I think that'll be enough. To, 
to get one uh, to get one done over there in South yeah. Dakota. Yeah, you know, I, I'm leaning towards South Dakota winning this one. I kind of got the Coyotes winning by about 10 points, 31-21. That being said, it feels like if Sac State pulls it out, it's going to be the Caden Bennett show. He showed flashes last week of what he could do when he's feeling it, 126 rushing yards. Ian did mention, mention fifth best scoring defense in the country. They only allow about 14 points per game, so it's going to be a hard-fought battle for sure. But if they get it done, Caden Bennett's going to be that guy, and he showed the flashes last week. Another playoff game on the road. Some guys just live for those moments, and he might be one of those guys. Like I said, I'm picking South Dakota, but last week, again, I, I picked the Fighting Hawks as well last week, and we saw what happened. So I'm, I, you know, I'm rooting for the Big Sky team to win, and hopefully Sac State can have a strong performance. Let's move along to Idaho. We'll be taking on number 14, Southern Illinois. Coach Jason Eck tweeted that that game's going to be on ESPN2. It's going to be the nightcap, a little more Big Sky after dark playoff edition. So that'll be fun, no doubt. Salukis, they finished 7-4. and four. They beat an FBS team. They had a 35 to nothing first round win. So it should be a tough game for the Vandals. They're currently four and a half point favorites on Sports Bet Montana. Mark, we'll start with you. Just want to, what has to go right for the Vandals and predictions for this game? Um, I think it's kind of like when they played Montana. They had a slow start and, and spent the whole game playing catch up. So they can't, you know, if they can avoid that and, and maybe, you know, score, get a stop and score again and then play with the lead the rest of the game. That's kind of their MO for winning and stuff like that. So they got to not let, because that's what Southern or Southern Illinois likes to do. They like, you know, get the lead and play with the lead and, and run the ball and stuff like that. So it's almost like whoever gets off to the best start and control the tempo of the game, I, you know, I, I think Idaho is going to be a little more refreshed with us, you know, coming off a week off and, got their guys back, and um, they should win this one. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm leaning that way, too. It'll be at the Kibbe Dome, so that doesn't hurt. How about you, Fritz? Yeah, I, I think Idaho's going to get off to a fast start, um, get a healthy Giovanni McCoy back, ready to go. It's uh, basically a, th- a three-week rest. He should be ready. Explosive offense. I don't think the Salukis, as good a program as they have, have had very good luck against Big Sky teams, especially on the road. So I'll go Vandals. Yeah, no, I'm leaning that way. Like I said, how about you, Ian? Uh, yeah, kind of similar to what Mark added. Um, you don't want to get behind against this good defense. They're the number three defense in terms of yards allowed per game. Uh, having to come back from a, an early deficit, while Idaho pro- definitely has the guys to be able to overcome something like that. It's obviously, not something you want to have to do in a playoff game. But I'm going to look for uh, the Vandals to come out to a really strong start a couple of scores in that first quarter. Yeah, it feels like they learned their lesson from that Weber State loss. They came back against Idaho State, made a first-half statement. So I'm expecting that as well. I will say I noticed the Salukis, they had the ninth most sacks in the country this year. McCoy got hit a lot this year when they played the Grizzlies. That could be something to watch. If they are getting pressure on him, you got to keep him upright. I'd say that's a major key. But that being said, I do have the Vandals winning this one by a touchdown. It's in the Kibbe Dome home field advantage, and they're going to want redemption on ESPN2 after dropping the one versus Montana earlier this year, that national spotlight. Real quick before we move along to the next game, I did just real quick want to get your guys' thoughts on another opportunity for Idaho to play on the national stage, ESPN2, and what it means for the program for the Big Sky. We'll start with you, Mark, and just go around real quick. Yeah, it's like Coach X said in the in his presser this week, it's basically a three-hour infomercial for University of Idaho stuff, you know, it's three hours you can't, you can't buy. And it's, it's kind of funny that um, in the old days when the big sky was on TV, it was a great, you know, the passing league where people threw all the time. And now most of these teams that are still left in the playoffs, you know, they can pass it, but they basically, you know, they're running, you know, basically do their thing on the ground and, mm-hmm. and then they, they throw it too. So it's kind of funny how the big sky has kind of changed from what it was years and years ago. Right, all the zone read, read option style of football nowadays, all the RPO. It all starts with the run game, it feels like. How about you, Fritz, just the opportunity for Vandals to grab the spotlight again and the big sky to get some recognition? Yeah, you know, I, I think that kind of stuff uh, helps recruiting. You know, when you show up on TV and you've got a uh, pretty cool little uh, stadium, the Kibbe Dome, um, cool uniforms, good squad. Um, used to be Montana that was showed up on ESPN2, you know, a couple times a year. And uh, so I know gets a couple shots at it, and uh, yeah, it'll be good for them. 
Yeah, no, I, I feel like on Twitter the Vandals have their little cult following. People love the Kibby Dome. People love following that team. They're fun. Coach X, fun. How about uh, you, Ian, just thoughts on that game being nationally televised? Yeah, I mean, it's great for the league. Uh, we saw what kind of game that was when it was Idaho uh, hosting the last time they were on national TV. I'm just hoping it's another really exciting game like that. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. I got a feeling we're going to see the Vandals pull out some trickery. I'm kind of feeling another Hayden Hatton touchdown pass in this one. Something interesting for the <laughs> national audience. They'll keep it interesting, no doubt about it. Moving along to the next matchup. This one's a little bit two FCS powerhouses in the last five years for the Bobcats, last 10 years for North Dakota State, but two ru- dominant rushing attacks meeting head-to-head in Bozeman. This is going to be an interesting one. The Bobcats are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Fritz, I'll start with you. Just what has to go right for the Bobcats and overall your predictions for this game? Well, I think, uh, like I talked about last week, they, they got to get both their guys involved. Mm-hmm. You know, Sean Chambers is going to be, on Saturday, going to be one of the top four players to suit up. And uh, just like he was a couple weeks ago, and he just didn't get to play very much against the Grizz. And, you know, a lot of it might have been situation, but I think they need to uh, figure it out, you know, Getting off to a good start would help, but even if they don't, as Coach Vegan said this week, if we get down seven zero, we can't, we can't just uh, we got to answer mm-hmm. and, and keep in the game and keep it going and use Sean Chambers as well as Tommy Mallott. And uh, I don't know, we'll see how the it's a really experienced line on both sides. Um, Cole Wisnowski stands out for the uh, NDSU defense. He's a converted linebacker now. He's a strong safety. Stands six foot four. He does everything for him. Uh, if the Cats can put a hat on somebody like that, then good things will happen. And I think the Cats will pull it off. It's going to be a heck of a game. And I, I took it right out of the words right out of my, right out of my mouth. they got to get Chambers more involved. Definitely looking forward to see what they do there. How about you, Ian, your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, yeah, I think it's just going to take very quickly flushing away that brawl of the wild loss. Uh, obviously not the result you want to have in a rivalry game, especially right before the playoffs. And then just get ready for a really hard-nosed physical game. Uh, you mentioned earlier just how exceptional both of these teams are, not just running the football, but they're also really good at defending the run. Both of these teams are in the top 30 of the FCS in terms of run defense. So it's it's really strength on strength in this game. Uh, I'm super excited to watch them and to make sure that's on my TV this weekend. I feel like that's going to be a premier FCS battle right there, no doubt about it. How about you, Mark? Yeah, kind of like what you guys said. Is, I mean, they both both run it really well. It, I guess it comes down to who, who can stop or slow down the other team more than the other team can slow them down. But, you know, Ian said they're both um, – their bo- rushing defense is really good. North Dakota State's allowing 107 yards, and Montana State's allowing 122 rushing yards. So they're both really good against, against the run. Um Kind of weird to see North Dakota State after, you know, watching them the last decade or so being almost like invincible. It's like, what are they doing on the road in the playoffs? They should have their, their three home games in Fargo and then go to go to Frisco or whatever. So it's a, a, little, it's a little different. It's not your older brother's North Dakota State. You know, they, the three losses are all to the Dakota schools, South Dakota, North Dakota, and South Dakota State. So um, th- what Fritz has talked about with Chambers and Malad, it could come down to, that it seems like when Montana State is running the ball well, one or both of them breaks a lot, breaks some big runs, and that, that's where they get, they get a lot of chunk plays out of their quarterback run. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. And uh, what you said about North Dakota State, right? Everybody's used to them having the first round by and marching on to the finals. I do think they're going to have a little extra motivation, kind of prove a point versus another big time team who would strength for strength on both sides of the ball. It's going to be fun to watch. I think. My biggest thing has to go right for the Bobcats. They could not throw the football in the first half versus the Grizzlies. Zero completions for zero yards. you got to get Tommy Malak in a rhythm. Got to get Chambers involved early, kind of like everyone's mentioned here. And just kind of got to get the passing attack going so you can run the football. It's hard to beat a team like the Bison when you're one-dimensional. I saw a stat. I think it's been 23 straight games. The Michigan-Ohio State game has been won by the team with more rushing yards. It feels like in this one, whoever can run the ball more effectively has a good chance to win the game because strength for strength, if one of those teams bursts out the gate running the heck out of the football, they might just run away with it. But I think that's going to be a battle. I'm probably a little high on the score here. I got the Bobcats winning 38-35, but after hearing some of those defensive numbers from Ian, I'm thinking it might be a little bit lower. I did want to ask – Again, Ian dropped some defensive stats here, so it might be a little crazy. 
Do you guys think there's any chance we see 600 combined rushing yards? If not, just like a total. I'm, I'm guessing we see 550. I think it's going to be a crazy track me in this one. Mark, we'll start with you. Just your thoughts. Do you think we could see that? Yes or no? Yeah, we could. I mean, it always seems like whenever you think you're going to see something, the, the almost the, the opposite happens. So, so we'll, we'll see. I think, you know, both teams have had time to work on, on how to defend the others and could come down with some just, just some crazy things. Like you said, if Malak gets to complete a few passes or Chambers can break a few long runs and stuff like that, that, that could be the difference. Yeah, and so evenly matched, who knows? It could come down to, like, um, who makes a big play on special teams, whatever. You, What about you, Fritz? You going over under my high number there? Yeah, that's pretty high number. Yeah, I think I'm going a little like crazy. 400 <laughs> might be possible. But, you know, um, I could be wrong about that, too. But, I, you know, I think it's interesting. Two years ago, they met for the national title. Um, while I was a freshman and got hurt right away, Andy Hughes, quarterback, has only gotten better since. In fact, Vegan said... You know, since then, he's just become a complete player, probably their best player on offense. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, with those two, well, both teams play two quarterbacks, so four quarterbacks, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of defenses really getting stretched out there. And uh, But, yeah, 400 yards. All right, we got 400 from Fritz. What about you, Ian? Final guess, and we'll move on to the Grizz and the Blue Hens out of Delaware. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm always really big on defense, so I'm going to go a little. I th- I still think there's going to be like a ridiculous amount of rushing yards in this game. I'm going to settle around like 450, but uh, 600 is a little outside of my comfort zone to to pick there. But I wouldn't be shocked. You know, all it takes is someone to break off a big run in that game, which is definitely possible with how good these teams are running the ball. True. I think I was getting a little caught in the moment there. I'm like, whoa, this could be an absolute crazy game. Could be 600 <laughs> rush. Okay, yeah, slow it down, Josh. All right, let's move on to the Delaware-Montana matchup. Number 11, Delaware. Number 2, Montana. The Blue Hens, they went 8-3 in the regular season. They overcame a slow start in the first round of the playoffs. They beat Lafayette. They were down at half, and they came back to win 36-34. They have the 14th-ranked scoring offense in the nation. The Grizz have the third-best defense, so that's a matchup to watch right there. Grays are favored by 17 and a half points, according to sports bet Montana. Fritz, why don't we start with you? Just what has to go right for the Grizzlies and predictions for this game? Well, I think it's it, it would be uh, good for them to get off to a good start, um, like they have been. Um, you know, they're, they're not sure which quarterback they're going to face. Uh, I, how do you say his name? Minute? Miniucci? Minisucci? Minisucci? Minisucci. He's our third quarterback, and for a while there, going dating back to the previous game when both their starting their starting end number two quarterback got her in back to back series, he was he was pretty rough, and then he finished fourteen of eighteen against uh, Lafayette, and led him to the win. So that's uh, a good good coming around moment for that freshman. Uh, the one thing that sticks out to me is Delaware has two dynamic returners. Uh, one of them almost housed uh, the first kickoff we saw in the game. And they kept kicking it to him because the other guy is really fast, too, the guy out of K-State. So um, special teams being Bobby Houck's bread and butter, um, I think it would be it could be really big in that game if Delaware was to break one out. Yeah, if you hit a big return in a playoff game, it can completely change the momentum, even if you're on the road, especially on the road. That'd be big for the Blue Hens. Definitely something there to watch. How about you, Ian, thoughts on that matchup? Uh, yeah, when I was taking a look at Delaware, uh, just noticed throughout the season, they've been a bit uh, susceptible in the offensive line and the passing. Uh, they've given up around two and a half sacks per game this year. I think this could be an opportunity for that Montana front to feast a little bit, pin their ears back and get a couple sacks. And even if they do go run heavy, uh, I think it'll be Montana's uh, top, top tier run defense to really shine there. Yeah, that would play right into their hands. Your thoughts on that one, Mark? Yeah, obviously Delaware is good. They're in the final eight, but you know, I don't think they haven't played the schedule that Montana or any of the big sky schools have played. Um, I think Montana, if they just play defense and you know, do their thing offensively, they should should win it fa- fairly handily. But like Fritz says, you get the returners involved, and they get a you know they get a, a, re- a return for a touchdown or two, and that just changes everything. So just. Yeah. Which is Montana to take care of business and finish it off early. Yeah, I'm right there with you. You can't let a team like that hang around. They do have offensive firepower. They came back from 28 to 13, being down their previous matchup, or 28 14, one of the two. So you don't want to let the Blue Hens hang around. Ian mentioned in the trenches, 
I think the Grizz are going to have a big advantage there. I think they need to be physical early, go out there and kind of punch them in the mouth right off the bat. Last week, their QB threw three interceptions, so that could be something the Grizzlies take advantage of. I got the Grizz in this one, home field advantage. I got them winning by over two touchdowns. I think it's going to be a hard-fought game early, but they pull away and kind of like Mark just said, just play your style of football, do what they've been doing. I think we could all piggyback off of that. But awesome stuff, guys. If there's anything else you want to throw out there, if not, that was a – Great show and just looking forward to a big-time weekend of FCS football, that North Dakota State game, and the Bobcats, I feel like it's on my calendar, circled right now, but all, all four matchups are going to be fun ones. And, yeah, anything else you guys want to throw out there? If not, great stuff. I'm good. All right. A lot yes. of good games this weekend. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Make sure you get all your screens out, all the screens in your house. <laughs> right. Vandals on ESPN2, that will be must-watch. And, of course, the Grizz and Hornets are going to perform, too. So it will be fun. Thank you, as always, to everybody for taking the time to watch the show. And thank you to you guys for taking the time to do this. You guys have a good one.